What can you tell us without giving anything away about just working? You called the matches with JR for the Mae Young Classic. What was that like working with JR in that tournament, which you mentioned about the ladies? I tried to call the matches with JR. Fortunately, he's a pro and helped me out. One thing that's funny is, I remember I would just get caught up in the moment. So I, I've never been behind that booth, really, you know, in a live environment like that. And and so I would just be sitting there watching the match, being like, wow, oh, this is crazy. But watching with my mouth shut. And JR literally, like, hit me in my arm, like, uh, kid, you're doing a job here, you know? And so I'd be like, oh, yeah, whoa, can you believe what she's doing? There? You know, so uh, it's a whole new art form, being behind that desk and trying to portray the importance and what they're trying to do and why and all, all of that stuff. Um, it's all going quietly in my head, but uh, to, to put that to words was a, it was a whole new avenue to try to tackle and to do these women justice. Did you have fun? Oh my gosh, it, it, it was a blast. I will admit, I felt a lot of weight and a lot of pressure to, to do the best I could and to, to you know, paint as good a picture as I could for, for them, but I, I did have a blast. And what was it like for you to work at the WWE Performance Center and work with talent there and just if you could tell us about the coaches and that facility and what they built there because I'm guessing it wasn't like anything where you trained when you were training. Sure, you know, um, not only the evolution with the women in wrestling but with the business in general and to, to basically have a college, you know, like a university level facility that uh, athletes of, of all backgrounds can come to, whether they're just honing and perfecting their skills and they've already been around the world wrestling, or whether they're just an amazing soccer star, track star, or, or you know, something like that, and, and, and they, they want to see what can happen. Um, every tool is available there, whether it's the coaches from all over the world equipment to, to get your body in shape, uh, to get your martial arts in shape, to get your ring work in shape, and, and watching these stars being built from the ground up, having never taken a wrestling bump to to putting on great matches. You know, uh, somebody that stood out to me in the Mae Young Classic, I was at the tryout for Bianca Belair. She had never wrestled at all, and she delivered in that Mae Young Classic. Is all I'll say, I don't want to give it away, I want you to watch, but Wow, I was there. She she never run even run the ropes, and now she is just owning that ring in her match with a like a multiple year veteran, you know. And it, it's uh, it's cool to see see the factory. Lita, a couple more questions. We'll wrap this up for you. Thank you so much. When you're talking about talent and people like that, does it give you a different special feeling from when you're working a match and doing well to then training someone else and watching them do well? Oh yeah, I mean for me. Um, when I left WWE, it, it wasn't due to injury, it wasn't due to any anything other than I felt like I set out way more than I ever thought I would and it does take every ounce of your focus and determination and time and passion and I had it was just missing, you know, my friends and family and, and life outside of wrestling. And I was like, you know, I've, I've kind of done it, so I'd like to step back while, like, still can. And so I'm very proud of that chapter. And then watching people develop from behind the scenes, it's so rewarding in a completely different way because, you know, I don't feel anything left to prove in my in front of the camera. I would love to be able to do whatever I could to watch other people succeed and have their chapter and their their version of of, of that because I, I sure had mine and definitely enjoyed it and I love being able to, to see other people be able to do the same. And you mentioned it earlier and part of the another passion for you is music. So tell us about some of your musical background, instruments, singing, what you're able to do and would it be was it punk rock? Yeah. Is yeah. really your style of music so and some of the some of the groups you listen to. Oh, I mean well punk rock raised me, you know, uh, I I would fortunately was influenced by some really cool bands that had a really good message. Fortunately, they were not telling me to do terrible things because I was lived and breathed by the words of their songs. You know, uh, Bad Brain 7 Seconds, Black Flag, you know, just really no one tells me what to do. I, I, I'm i going to make up the rules as I go along and, and so that was very influential to me. Um, I'm not necessarily a musician, like no formal training and things like that. Um, it's the same, uh, you know, as, as wrestling, as much as you can be technically trained, a lot of it's based on feel. And so, yeah, um, I do do some some singing, some bass playing, guitar playing, but I would not um, consider myself a, 
an expert by any means. I just go out there for fun. Is it a different feeling when you're in the ring in front of people and when you're on stage singing and performing in front of people? Uh, yeah, I mean any live audience is going to have a similar feel because you can't really plan anything too far out in advance because it's all based on what's what's there right in front of you. Um, so that aspect is the same, but but it, it, it is different, you know. It, it feels more like a pirate ship, the whole band, because we're all moving as one unit as opposed to wrestling matches. There's a lot of different components that are they're all working together. Dory Funk Jr., what has he meant to you? He's in Ocala, Florida, still yeah. doing shows, still training. Yeah. What is he? What has he and Marty meant to you? Man, uh, the the Funking Dojo was such a great experience. Um, Dory was doing was doing that pretty much. You know, he knows the formula, and he he was pumping out stars, Kurt Angle, Test, and uh, draws, and and you know people before like you know kind of getting them that final ready. You know, they had background of whatever, but but he would get them ready for for TV. And so when he started to do that on his own, even though I was already with ECW, I was like, man, this guy. He knows directly from the horse's mouth what, what needs to happen, and uh, you know I want to experience that. So it was, you know, I hadn't learned it so much in one week in my entire life because it was just sun up to sun down, training in the ring, um, listening when you weren't in the ring, and uh, he's got a real like a a gentle, stern way. We're like, I don't need to raise my voice because I just am gonna command that that respect and uh, it was very very special to be able to work with them and, and early on in their off WWE uh, camps you know I, I've seen some of the guys that were in that camp uh, in various places still to that day so it was a very bonding experience for, for us. For you what's your social media? Oh it's uh, it's at Amy Dumas it's just my name um, I'm, I'm, I'm not super I'm sporadic some days I'm social some days I'm just to myself, so if you bug me enough, I'll eventually see it. Something, Amy, thank you so much. Lita, WWE Hall of Famer, one of the coolest women you're ever going to want to meet. Thank you so much. All right, thank you.